This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Murder in the morning from the Hidden Killers Podcast. Oh, it just keeps getting more and more interesting in the trial of Karen Reed. As it continues on, Judge Beverly Cano set to rule on a pivotal piece of evidence. A video captured by a surveillance camera in John O'Keefe's driveway shows Reed's black Lexus, black Lexus SUV backing out on January 29, 2022. Reed's defense attorney suggests that she may have accidentally reversed into O'Keefe's car, damaging the taillight. We've seen that already. And you do, in fact, see when you look at it really closely, because this was presented outside of the jury, uh, you see the car move. Does that mean that the that the taillight was broken at that moment in time? Not necessarily. Um, you can back into other vehicles. Typically, the bumpers are what hits before the actual taillight hits, and that might have just been what it was. I mean, considering there is taillight embedded into John O'Keefe's clothing, uh, it may have just been kind of a, a back into thing. Even if it wasn't, there's still taillight embedded into John O'Keefe's clothing. So explain that part. Because that's not exactly a plantable piece of evidence. It's not like a chunk of taillight you brought over here and then planted it there. We're talking like microscopic pieces that are in his clothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you can't just implant that. That has to happen by the act of something else. Now, I will say this. The prosecution are completely inept and incompetent for putting Trooper Joseph Paul on the stand. A Massachusetts uh, <laughs> State's police uh, crash reconstructionist. And I say that in air quotes because he seems more like, I don't know, a sixth grade student who's afraid of public speaking. Um, uh, and he really had was not comfortable on the stand at all. And I, I know everybody's kind of like playing this lightly. I, I don't know what to say about the the man. I, I, I don't believe he has any sort of malintent. I don't think he is trying to hide anything. I think he's extremely uncomfortable with public speaking. He's not a expert witness. And I think, I don't know how the hell they brought him to the stand thinking he could do this unless he presented some other way completely. But I don't, what I saw up there was like, I could be wrong. This is just my speculation, but I saw someone with probably an Asperger's or a, uh, an, uh, something on the spectrum of, of fear of speaking aloud um, the way he was gasping, the way he was just getting caught up in words and things of that nature. And why do I say that? Because I was like that once. And I learned to to get myself out of that uh, through a lot of work. But I understand. I watch those guys and I'm like, God, that's painful. Um, but I remember kind of feeling like that when the public, when the spotlight was on me. I didn't know what the fuck to say. And I worked in radio since I was 14. But there was times where it's just, it's overpowering uh, if you have something like that. And and I believe I'm somewhat Asperger's somewhere there. Um, but I, I could see that I could sympathize with this guy. And I'm like, I really felt bad for him. I think he was trying to do his best. But until you kind of can get a grasp on that and, and work learn how to work your way through that, it's very hard. And I just don't think he's there. Um, anyway. He was on the, uh, well, let me ask you, what, what was your assessment of him? I, I felt that he was really lacking in what he was able to present. He may have known more yeah. than what he got out of his mouth. I think he wanted to be you know, super so I, accurate and knew that he could yeah. not be without looking at his notes because there were so many technicalities and you're not allowed to do that. And he was obsessed with trying to be accurate, but he couldn't because he couldn't memorize all of those things is what I was kind of getting out of it. Yeah. And I think there's, I'm not sure what the vetting process is before you put somebody on the stand <laughs> as a, a quote unquote expert witness, but you should have been, he never should have passed the test. No, he should have never been the one presenting this information. It should have been someone else going, look, so-and-so over here got this. I'm presenting it. And because he yeah. was a fucking train wreck at the end of the day. Not trying to be mean. And he was a fucking train wreck. And he went up against Alan Jackson. That guy is a fucking shark. And he so, took him down. Yeah. He, they threw him to the wolves, basically. Well, fuck, he, even on, not even on cross. 
I was watching it this morning and I was watching uh, literally the prosecution, which is like tossing out softballs to the guy and he couldn't handle yeah. that. And it was like, oh, fuck. And now it's like, and now cross. I'm like, oh, I thought that was cross at first. Oh, and it like, wasn't. Oh, what are we about to watch now? And I, it was painful. It was painful to watch. Um, again, I don't think he's hiding anything. I just think the guy has no skills in that area and should not have been the expert witness for the key piece of testimony in this case. What the fuck yeah. was the prosecution? Yep. Was the prosecution thinking? I, 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 I'd love to know. And if you're like ever in that area and like, Oh, guess what? Your public defenders, uh, Lala here, you're fucked because look how big of a case this is. And this is your best guy that you got. You could have gotten so many better people than this. And he's your key guy. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that wasn't good. It's, it, I mean, it's incompetency. Paul testified that John O'Keefe was struck by Karen Reed's SUV traveling in reverse at up to 24 miles an hour, projecting him more than 30 feet. He described the impact on O'Keefe's arm and shoulder and addressed questions about the location of debris and key cycles recorded by uh, Reed's vehicle. Let's take a listen. Did you account for the fact that his arm is on hinge? It's what? Say again. Did you account for the fact in this scenario that you just told the jurors that his arm is on a hinge? On a hinge. shoulder? Okay. Okay. So, your arm got hit. Didn't his arm just swing? <laughs> I said arm and shoulder area, so his arm could have been considered part of it. Even if his shoulder got the upper, okay. bicep, pointing to his upper biceps. Mm -hmm. right? There's no injuries on his shoulder. Not a single one. Not even a bruise. Right? Like you said, it looked, it looked like to me it was from up from up here. I don't know how far I can up back here, but it was up here. Well, so. you're the one that, that talked about his injuries on his arm. Yes. That's limited to about mid biceps, about mid forearm, correct? Okay. Right? Yes. No injuries on the shoulder, no injuries on the torso, no injuries on the ribs, no injuries on the back, correct? Is that right? Yes. So your theory is you got hit on the arm, took the brunt of the force from the taillight on the arm, stayed with the, the vehicle long enough for the taillight to explode, basically, to shatter. Then these striations get on his arm, these abrasions. Does a pirouette, a spin, <laughs> counterclockwise, and flies 30 feet in the air to his point of rest. Yeah, it happens probably a little faster than that, though. <laughs> Actually said he hit his head on the curb. I said that's one of the possibilities of <clears throat> when you look at the roadway, as he gets spun around kind of clockwise, it's a possibility that the curb is there, any blunt force object on the ground, as the ground is pretty blunt. Well, except in your scenario that you just told us, he flew through the air onto the light dusting of snow, grass, and dirt. I didn't say through the air. Say that again? I didn't say he went, got flown, thrown through the air. Okay, I'll use your word. He got projected. Projected, projected, projected doesn't mean it's not incorporating just the throw. Project just means you get pushed forward. There's a, two parts of that. There's the air, then there's the, the ground, like I said earlier, the tumbling, the rolling, whatever that part of the crash would happen. Projecting is just what we call what happens to a pedestrian post-impact with a crash. Okay, so a couple of questions. If his arm, elbow, took the brunt of that entire impact. How do you account for the fact that he didn't suffer a broken bone? I don't know. I don't know. Here's a little bit more from that. Uh -huh. Here's a little bit more from that testimony. So the Vigo was traveling in reverse. And how fast was the vehicle traveling and over what distance? The vehicle traveled up to 24 miles per hour and approximately 62 feet. What if anything occurred then? The, uh, the right rear of the Lexus struck the pedestrian, John O'Keefe. And post-collision, what if anything uh, occurred with regard to Mr. O'Keefe? Mr. O'Keefe was projected forward and to the left along the front yard of 34 February Road. During uh, cross-examination, defense attorney Alan Jackson challenged Paul's qualifications 
and the methods he used to reach his conclusions. Trooper Paul, if you were qualified to, quote, look into all this stuff, you would probably know these answers, wouldn't you? Objection. Sustained. Are there any other calculations that you'd need to figure out the stuff that you were talking to about with the grand jury? Objection. Sustained. How about calculating the final velocity of the objects after the collision? Would that be important? What objects? That would be John O'Keefe's body, sir. The you, object that I don't, you claim was flying through the air 30 feet. Objection. Okay, sustained. How about calculating the displacement uh, using kinematic equations? Would you be able to do that? The displacement of the body? In order to calculate how far the body would move based on the mass of the object striking the body, could you use displacement using kinematic equations? So like I said before, the side swipe, he would not have gotten 100% of the vehicle, 100% of the speed of the striking vehicle. It would have vastly underestimated this vehicle. You couldn't hit the, a person and side swipe them and spin them off to the side and have that and get a speed from those calculations. So you're saying that the discipline of physics cannot figure out how far John O'Keefe's body would move. But you personally figured out that he would have flown now somewhat, or been projected somewhat 30 feet. Objection. Sorry? Sustained. Are you saying that the principles of physics are incapable of determining with the proper calculations how far John O'Keefe's body would have moved given the collision at, at issue? Objection. Is that what you're saying, Trooper? No. Training's question? Well, you just said because it was a sideswipe, all these calculations, these physics calculations are inapplicable, right? What I'm saying it would underestimate the speed and the distance. The truth is, Trooper Paul, you have no idea what all these physics calculations mean, do you? Objection. Sustained. You've not been trained in <laughs> physics formally, have you? Yes. You have been. It's, in, it's, in, it's incorporated into the classes. Right. You have a few classes that use the word physics, but you haven't been formally trained in physics, have you? Objection. Sustained. Yeah. This is their expert <laughs> fucking Ouch. witness. I mean, for the love of God, everything is so goddamn questionable in this thing. And then this is your expert witness to discuss, like, the key points of the fucking case. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is going to sound horrible, but at the end of the day, like I hope this guy's on fucking suicide watch because of what he displayed today, because it was horrible. Uh, I can't imagine he walks away feeling very good about himself, quite honestly. And I don't, and I, I feel bad for the guy because I just don't think he has a, uh, a temperament to speak publicly, but holy shit, it was not good. No. And like I said earlier, he was thrown to the wolves. Um, Jackson was like just sitting there waiting, like frothing at the mouth yeah. and you could feel it. And then just, oh, God, it was like watching the gladiator. Yeah, it was Paul's testimony. His uh, Paul's testimony crucial as it attempts to establish the speed and dynamics in the collision. However, the defense laid into Trooper Paul's theory as well. So the Vigo was traveling in reverse. And how fast was the vehicle traveling and over what distance? The vehicle traveled up to 24 miles per hour and approximately 62 feet. What if anything occurred then? The, uh, the right rear of the Lexus struck the pedestrian John O'Keefe. And post-collision, what if anything uh, occurred with regard to Mr. O'Keefe? Mr. O'Keefe was projected forward and to the left along the front yard of 34 February Road. The trial obviously has seen several key witnesses uh, take the stand. Forensic software expert Ian w Whiffen testified about a Google search made by Jennifer McCabe. How long to die in cold? And this was good testimony. This really, if you're a fair thinking human being, this is literally somebody from Cellbrite that is talking yeah. about how this works and explaining the bullshit of twelve twenty of 2.27 a.m. It was like, oh, what about this 2.27 a.m. search? Well, we've been saying for a long time, if you just understand how these things work, that's not accurate. It, it was a open window, or basically is what we're talking about here. 
Uh, and yeah, and then you have the expert from the company who has nothing to do with these people explaining to you how it actually works. It was conducted at 6.23 a.m., raising suspicions about the timeline of events. Whiffin clarified the time span initially uh, thought to be 2.27 a.m. was misleading. It only reflected uh, when a search tab was opened, which is 6.23 a.m. He also discussed the possibility of data tampering, concluding it was highly, highly unlikely. But that's where the uh, defensive care and rate is going to go. Let's take a listen. The original question is just basically how can we explain this 227 timestamp? Uh, I spoke to my colleague and requested uh, if he could contact the investigators and any information that they could share about where this particular timestamp was found. There's plenty of other evidence on that extraction that shows what activity was occurring at 227 um, 40 seconds, uh, and there's plenty of uh, evidence later on in the day that shows that that particular search was conducted at 6.23, uh, I believe 51 seconds, and then a, uh, a similar search uh, at 6.24 and 18 seconds, I believe. They're literally looking down to the second mark of what they can tell from the Celebrite data because they know how to read it, because they created yeah. it. Nicholas Guerrero detailed the analysis of the electronic devices, including phones and computers, and the steps taken to bypass security measures on Reed's phone. He highlighted the significant GPS data found in O'Keefe's phone in contrast to Reed's. He also read text messages between John and Karen. We got there. Before he did that, he muttered something to himself. And uh, he was a little frustrated on the stand. Let's take a listen to that. Material that you reviewed from the defendant's phone, is that consistent with what you observed in Mr. O'Keefe's phone? Yes, it is. Here we go. <clears throat> Kill me. Right there. Kill me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, you're on camera. We can rewind yeah, this and go, did he just do what I thought he you did? You got a mic right there on you, dude. But I get, I mean, I think I'd feel the same way, too. Because it's like, I'm just laying out the fucking facts here. And all these people are going to be like, that's bullshit. It's like, okay, well, did you create Celebrite and how these things work and how the text messaging works and how do we can track this data? Or are you just kind of guessing based on some YouTuber saying this is how it works? Um, yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to go with the expert who has nothing to gain or lose on any of this. He's there from the fucking company stating how this works. Uh, Karen Reid's defense is going to go down the road of, well, he was given uh, data that was tampered with. Uh, again, mm -hmm. he said highly unlikely. Uh, and they can tell what's tampered with or not. And again, he has no, he has, he doesn't have a horse in the race. So there's no reason for him to lie. The trial yeah. uh, obviously brought a lot of uh, various technical uh, details to light. And we're going to continue to see that uh, throughout the wake uh, as uh, the uh, prosecution uh, begins to wrap up its uh, case in chief. And uh, then we'll get over to the uh, defense to see who they bring up and what they bring up. But we're probably talking a few more weeks here. Does Karen take the stand? I don't think so yet. Um, I don't think she needs to at this point by any stretch of the imagination. If it was looking thanks at to Michael Proctor. Yeah. Thanks to Proctor. And thanks to uh, not just Michael Proctor. I think her, 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 uh, if I was Karen Reed and I'm hearing uh, that uh, trooper Paul on the stand and his insane Joseph Paul and his insane nervousness and just lack of confidence in anything he was saying. And again, I don't think it, it necessarily attributes that the facts are, not solid. I just think he's an extremely nervous human being and probably has some sort of uh, disorder or something going on that prevents him from preventing from uh, presenting in a very well way. Um, that uh, I don't think they're questionable. I, I just think it was presented in a horrific way. The last person on earth you'd want to present these facts. <laughs> That's quite the case, isn't it? Oh my god. It's uh, it's getting crazier by the day. There is far more to come. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll keep bringing you the updates uh, here throughout the week. Uh, yeah, a few, there's a few more days of uh, trial this week uh, and some half days here and there. But uh, it's, uh, it's going to keep moving forward.
And of course, we will bring you the latest right here. Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.